Well, hello, everybody. Hello, Pastor R. Well, I'm here. Dr. Amir Rashidi, and this is Pastor R. Dallas Green, and mm -hmm. we are back on another episode of That Settles the Issue, and we need to start with the question of, what's the issue? The issue today is change. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> question is, is change possible? Wow. Some would argue that change is impossible. A leopard can't change your spots. People are what they are. They can't change. Others would say that change is inevitable. We are always changing. Lady Gaga, <laughs> she goes through two or three changes in a half time show. <laughs> That's right. So we come to a fork in a road. We've been on a path. Um, this path we've been on for a long, long time. We see there's a cliff ahead and we decide that something needs to change. We enter into a time of contemplation. Yes. Learning. And then we decide. And then we have to implement the change. That's right. Kind of maintain the change. I believe that people change when they learn enough that they want to, mm. or if they hurt enough that they have to. So a friend of mine, Jack Lou, who's a physician, said to me, you need to see a cardiologist. Um, so I went to see a guy named Sonia Ahucha, who's okay. a cardiologist in our area. And he did a stress test, stress test on me, and he said the results were in, in, um, inconclusive. Right. So he sent me to the Washington Hospital Center for catheterization, and they sent a probe into my heart. And this is what they found, Dr. Amir. They found that I had a good heart. I was happy about that. Yes. I was surprised, but a good heart. But they said that one of my three arteries that supplies blood to my heart had mm -hmm. some plaque. It was my right coronary artery had about a 60-70% plaque due to a focal point stenosis. So the cardiologist put me on statin drugs yes. and blood pressure medicine. I asked how long do I have to take it? He said, for the rest of your life. Mm. And I told you about this and you said, well, you need to research Dean Ornish. That's right. Who's the authority on reversing heart disease. Yes. So I made it my point to dive deep into his stuff and he invites people to make four changes. <clears throat> the first change is to eat a plant-based whole food diet. That's right. Consisting of fruit and vegetables. Yes. Legumes and nuts and some non-fat yogurt. Not beer and chocolate. <laughs> no, because you know you can be a vegan and have a six-pack of beer and an Oreos <laughs> <laughs> and a big pizza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's no uh, animal products in Oreos. Exactly. <laughs> change number two is exercise. He says okay. to walk at least a half an hour a day. Yes. And work up a sweat. Yes. Change number three is meditate at least 20 minutes every day. Wow. Get yourself quiet and still. And the fourth change has to do with finding loving support and intimacy. Yes. Change number one gets at what you eat, nutritious, d delicious food. Change number two, how much do you move? Right. Get off that couch. Yes. Change number three has to do with managing our stress. Right. Feeling more peace. And then change number four has how much love and support you have. It's finding a safe environment to be right. honest and open and authentic. So my guess is for you, the hardest one must be the first one. Yes, that's exactly true. <laughs> <laughs> so I took this dive into a plant-based um, whole food diet where I don't eat anything with a mother right. or a face. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Amir, I'm eating more kale than I've ever eaten in my life. Wow, I bet. And um, oatmeal and um, spinach and all these delightful little vegetables I'm eating. Red vegetables, red uh, green vegetables, yellow vegetables. Yes. I'm eating vegetables and vegetables and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> now apparently, and I don't understand the physiology of this completely, but the endothelial cells in your arteries, they if they have enough nitric oxide, they begin to heal and repair themselves. Yes. If we don't put inflammatory things into them, and meat can be an inflammatory, so if I don't inflame them, they yes. will heal. God right. has designed us to regenerate. Yes. So in the midst of a big change, so people say you can't change, Yes. I can argue that for the last few weeks I've been to a major change. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah certainly you have. Uh, I, I mean, I, you, you look at uh, and I have some patients that would say this is that some some of them will say the heart attack was the best thing that ever happened to me, yeah. you know, because that was the uh, um, catalyst yes. to that change. You know, the the news of potential problems is 
is motivation. So that motivation needs to be there. So when we when when the alarm clock goes off at let's say 5 a.m. and you set it particularly to get up and exercise at 5 a.m. Yeah. But you don't have to leave for work till 7 a.m. The urgency is not so much there, but as that urgency increases, motivation increases, yes. and then change happens. Which is, you mentioned the word decision, yes. right? You make a decision. Well, a lot of people think they've made a decision, but they haven't made a decision yet. Like, for example, if I'm in bed and I make a decision to get out of bed, I haven't made that decision until I actually get out of bed. Yes. You otherwise, just think about it. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise I'm contemplating it. I have decided I'm going to do this. No, you haven't. Unless you do it, you haven't decided it, decided to do it. So, so that's one. Uh, secondly, I firmly believe we are a product of our habits. Mm. Habits are difficult to break. Smoking is a habit, yes. right? Um, having a certain food, you know, uh, uh, you know, after dinner every single night, that's a habit. And that habit, see, habits come with a reward. Yeah. Right. The reward reinforces it. Pavlov's dog. We, you know, in a sense, we behave the same way as as animals do. Is we reward a bad habit and then we stay with it. Yeah. And then and then stress. Stress makes you revert to your old patterns and habits. So my word of caution to you would be: Yes, you have changed, but you haven't fully changed until something stressful comes your way yeah. and you maintain your path. That's the test. Because, yes, because I see people who quit smoking. Uh, we were joking about this earlier. I said, Mark Twain said, it's easy to quit smoking. I've done it a million times. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I've started a plant-based diet myself several times. And I didn't stick with it. So um, when there's a tragedy, when there is, God forbid, something yes. that bothers someone, the person who hadn't smoked for months, even years, yeah. will revert back to smoking. Yes, we want to comfort ourselves. Exactly. We go back to what helped us in the past. Yes, yes, yes. So from that standpoint, do we really tr truly change? And and I, I'm on the fence on that because I think we do, but we really have to intentionally build some new habits. Yeah. How are you rewarding yourself for what you're doing? Well, you know, I feel better mm -hmm. having not eaten um, animal products. Okay. So I think I'm the happiest vegan in the world. Okay. And... Uh, I guess the reward for me would be I see the cliff, which yes. would be that if this progresses, that's right. What happens then is angina, and things things like, you know, angioplast and stenting and maybe right. heart bypass. Yes. So none of that is desirable to me. Exactly. Also, my mom had diabetes, and I, as my sugar blood count goes up, I can see myself with increased weight, um, right. stepping into that. So I really want to avoid. The right. negative things, yes. which for me is a huge positive. Sure, yeah. So I'd love to see your next uh, next scan. I, I've got one more thing to say about change. Okay. And I did say I'm on the fence because I don't know if everybody can change. And certainly you've demonstrated tremendous self-control and self-discipline to do what you've done. And, and you've accepted it, which is a big thing. So I firmly believe you'll be able to stay the course yeah. and continue. I also know that God can change us. He can change us. I know for a fact the minute we believe, yes. there is a big change inside of us. Yes. And that change is not just permanent for the rest of our life, yes. but it's permanent for eternity. Yes. Tell us about that change. What is that change? Well, one huge person who changed was Daniel. Yes. Daniel was in Babylon, and he was in an educational program learning the literature and language of the, of the Babylonians. And he chose a different diet out of his faith. That's right. His conscience was stricken by what was set before him. And he said, just give me vegetables and water yeah. for 10 days. <laughs> Test me. And he was healthier and stronger That's right. than the other, other young men. So faith always takes us into actions. When we believe, mm -hmm. we take God at his word, and we begin to implement what he said. The greatest thing we can believe is that there is a person who loves us. His name is Jesus Christ, who went to a cross and That's right. for us. And yes. when we believe that, our eternal um, destination changes. We get to now have the, God begins to live inside of us and gives us a capacity of love. We get to be with him forever. So, yes, I believe change is possible. That's a wonderful thing. Make sure you believe and make sure you change every day.